So this is all arm line, all mm -hmm. wrist driven. So my, my engine, my chest isn't the primary driver. See the difference there? Mm -hmm. And you'll see like what's weird is this looks okay. This looks way better. Hey guys, we're back with Riley. Good to see you again. Good to see you. School. How's it going, man? Yeah, baby, doing great. And we're talking you. about sort of three exercises, three trainings you can do for spiral line. This is really about more of a rhythmical motion, less tension. That's the big, the big key here. Yeah, and I think like even on that tension topic, there's tension in parts of it, and you're slacked out in others, and you're bouncing back and forth from like tension to relaxation. Okay, so let's let's set this up because you, off camera, you kind of showed me this spiral spiral line. Yep. We're talking about sort of the fascia in our body, right? Exactly. So why don't you sh demonstrate on me? So I'm like the anatomical example, I guess you can kind of show. Perfect. That's great. So the first thing I'm going to do, like all of this stuff, I really learned from Dr. Luke Brackey. So we've got to throw him in there mm -hmm. before we even We're going to have him on the channel. So. He's going to be on the <laughs> Sure. He's good. Be good. You should. <laughs> yeah, he's fantastic. So typical kinesiology, right, mm -hmm. is like we would go cut here, cut there. Cool. Look, a bicep. Mm -hmm. When it contracts, it does this. When it relaxes, it does this. Then we go to the next muscle and do yeah. da, 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 which is like super intricate time consuming it's like you look at it as like a system of like pulley <laughs> it's just not not worth your time we're all about the flow so we all about the flow up in this building right? so, uh, spiral lines so we have all these different like they're called fascial lines right but what's cool in our musculature all of the tracks like in the bicep the highways go this way like the grain but if mm -hmm. you cut through a stake Right, and you cut through it, and you see all those different strains. That's what we're seeing in the in the in the bicep here. They're going that direction, and then they go this direction, and this direction, and so on and so forth. So it's like a system of highways. Mm -hmm. It's not like we have the grains going this way, and then the forms are going here. They're all in the same direction. So that would be a fascial line, yeah. and the arm line. So we have anterior arm line, and we have posterior arm line, mm -hmm. and we have all these different lines. One of them is the spiral line. And the spiral line starts right up here around the back of, uh, of our head. It'll go down underneath our scap, so it tracks this way. Okay, now as you rotate the other way, go ahead and rotate. Wraps around under here. Wraps right around under there, right underneath your boobie. <laughs> okay, across on an X like this, there's one side that goes this way as well. Goes right atop that pointy portion in your pelvis, mm -hmm. to your iliac crest, and then runs down here. Now this side, like the lower spiral, lower body spiral, I don't like to talk about a whole lot, like leg action is almost like a response of what's going on in our upper spiral. I think oftentimes there's a lot of talk on, okay, like basket drill, let this go. Well, a lot of that is just slack. Even though we see that happen, a lot of it is just because of the behavior that the upper spiral is commanded. Like, this is the conductor, this is the orchestra. Right. And I think for people that watch our channel, you know, we've talked about things with the, the leg action, but a lot of that has to do with our pressure shifts too. Yes. Right? So falling, landing, um, pushing into the ground the right way, but yep. that has to do with our center as well. Exactly. Right? And how that's all matched up. Mm -hmm. So when we're looking at the spiral, to like really simplify this, the spiral line, if we thought about it right up here, right underneath the scap, crosses underneath and right here to the iliac crest. That line and this line, just imagine a big X. Yeah. Like if I put duct tape on you, those are the upper spirals. Like, like really looking at um, our golf swing. So anterior slings, anterior spirals. So if you get into setup, just right here facing the camera, an easy way to feel this is if back here right on this scap, where it's running up here, Yep. I would like players to feel like they're getting this portion of the spiral separating away from this portion of the spiral. There you go. And I feel a little bit of a crunch up there. Exactly. And you'll feel this like super stretched. Yeah. Crazy stretch. And a really good way to feel this, you go ahead and hold that here. And I'm just going to hold this on this angle right here. Okay, go ahead and use that spiral line, not your arms, to okay. go ahead. So not that and, one. Exactly. Okay. So whoop, there you go. So you'll really feel all that load up. That's a beautiful look right so there. I feel it even in my glute a little bit, but yep. right through there. Yeah, and so what you're feeling, this is part of the spiral. This is the lower spiral that's on. Mm -hmm. So all of this, when we're talking about that tension model like you're talking about, you're creating tension in one spiral, and the other spiral is slack. 
Yeah. So tension in this one, the other one slacks out. Mm -hmm. That's just general movement. If you're moving, walking, like typical gait patterns, parts of your of your fascia lights up and the other ones slack <laughs> out and then you'll bounce out when of it. You bend it like this, you create a stretch one place uh -huh. and slack, slack the other side. Okay, so why don't you hold this for a second? Mm -hmm. This is something we talked about too. It's like if this was a rubber band and I go ahead and kind of stretch this out, yep. now we're gonna let go. Yeah, go ahead and let it go. You're gonna hurt me. There right. you go. So now if I really did that, <laughs> hit some kids at school, yeah, right? That's right. Um, but in theory, that's what we're doing in our golf swing and in these exercises is to is to stretch the right way, right, in yep. a safe way that allows us to use sort of forces as opposed to creating things that in our golf swing that really we shouldn't be doing, adding tension, adding, uh, trying to apply things versus allowing them to happen a little bit more. Exactly, and a lot of the injuries in our game are like lower back, tennis elbow, right? What you're doing is instead of distributing the energy throughout like a line like the spiral, which is a massive line, fascial line in our body, if you put energy throughout that whole spiral, super safe. Mm -hmm. Compared to all the energy in one point, like the lower back, mm -hmm. right? We see that all the time, right? You're putting all the energy in one spot, no good. It's just like when I'm, when I first started working out in college, mm -hmm. I would try to isolate. Yep. Okay? What I began to realize is that one, I would, if I was just doing bicep curls, I was trying to isolate, isolate. I would have some forearm issues. I'd get some tension and some, my muscles would really get kind of crunchy, right? So I'd have to do more therapy and stuff to, to alleviate that. What I've realized now, especially the last four or five years, is that when I'm working out, I engage pretty much everything. Even in a bicep curl, I'm there, my core's tight. You could come up and punch me, and I'd still be able to do this. Yep. So even my pressure in my feet, everything. Yep. So it is a, a chain reaction versus solely, okay, position one, position <laughs> <Yeah>. two. <laughs> and that's where that, like the positions, like if you go up to the top, which I guess that'd be typical P4 position, mm -hmm. just to hold that position, you're energizing like the whole system. Yes. It's not dynamic, it's super static, it's tough to train that way because you don't feel like the dynamics of like bouncing in and out of like one load to the next. Mm -hmm. That's a super dynamic, incredibly athletic way to move compared to this position, this position, this position, still, still, still. I, I got to tell a little story about this because last night I was at baseball practice uh -huh. and right now I'm letting somebody else coach my head. Well, my boy, I throw him ground balls. He fills the ground ball and he loads his feet and it's a bounce. So he goes, yep. bounce, throw. Yep. Well, they had him go like this. Pick the ball up, aim your glove, throw. So after practice, I went back out on the field and I threw him some ground balls and I said, remember your footwork. You pick it up, you bounce, you throw. Throws it twice as hard. The coach sees me doing it, comes over and asks me, will you help all the kids? Because... I've never seen that before, and it immediately. I, just thought, be, just, I thought he was going to say, oh, you're just that prototypical guy. <laughs> Stay out of the way. Yeah, yeah that's right? well, it. It could have gone one of two ways. Yeah, could have. <laughs> Luckily, yeah. it went the way I wanted yeah. it to yeah. because they saw immediately my boy is actually, yeah. when he did it right, when it was, there was bounce in his step, and it wasn't like this mechanical yeah. thought process, he actually has a good arm. But when he was doing what they would, they had him field it, Step, point your glove, throw, like breaking it into all the pieces. He went from being able to throw really hard to could, bounce it and roll it across the infield. Yeah, and the ball's probably going all over. And he couldn't throw too. straight. Yeah. So he loses all precision and all easy speed. Like, ugh. Yeah, piece to piece to piece. Just not a good way to train no matter what sport. Exactly. All right, so let's get into we did this one movement where we were talking about sort of winding it up, right? Yep. In that good stretch in the backswing. Yep. Now, we also have these two sticks here. Beautiful. I'll let you demonstrate. I'll take this cool. one here. Yep. 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 So you yep. can um, demonstrate this one about how we're trying to make sort of uh, these sticks cross, right? Yeah, so really easy couple of like at-home deals. You can either grab a band, like the one that we were just talking about, one that's pretty slack. You can wrap it around either, you know, a a table leg on the bottom so it's kind of on a, an inclined plane of 45 to 30 degrees somewhere in there and do the exact same mm -hmm. exercise that we were just doing 
or get an alignment stick, put it in your belt loops, um, and then grab another alignment stick, or in this case we have a PVC. But you'll notice the distance from the left side of the sticks is the same as the right side of the sticks. It's set up. So we're not set up here or here, right? We're just generally stacked. Now when you start moving, like into the backswing for example, we want those, those sticks to intersect fairly early here. So we're creating this, again, anterior sling with the spiral, where this spiral from the iliac crest up through underneath this um, scap in my right side is stretched and loaded. And that's not solely, go ahead and do that again, that's not solely from down here, it's also through our rib cage. Yep. Yep. Right. Exactly. Side, our side bend. Exactly. And just be careful with side bend. Side bend should be done as high up as you possibly mm -hmm. ribs up. get it. Ribs up. Exactly. From the ribs up. It's not in the L-spine, so it wouldn't look like yeah. that where it's overdone. Right. You'll feel it. Like, it just doesn't feel good. Well, if something doesn't feel good, chances are it's and not. one area I talk a lot about is sort of up in here, too. Yep. A lot of you guys get stiff, chin high. You've probably mm -hmm. heard that before. So softness in the neck. Yep. So that the eyes can be down at the ball the correct way. Yeah, exactly. And that's what's interesting is you'll we'll see guys that are that way. Mm -hmm. right? They're actually right then yep. because they're trying to travel level. Not just do we see it. I see it every day, all the time. <laughs> all the time, right? Yeah, every old guy that shows up, that's what they do. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. And the problem is, is our fascia likes to bounce and it feels like speed. So we'll see... Guys, we see it too, Milo, right? Where guys will get into right bend early and then they bounce out and what's that pattern? Boom. Well, that's why, that's one of the big reasons they do it. Once you go right, you're gonna go left because your body likes to bounce. Yep, and just like we did when you stretch that fascia and let it go, it wants to bounce out of there and get rid of that energy. Just mm -hmm. That's just general. That's so what if we want it to be able to go in this pattern where we go the opposite of over the top, Yep. then we've got to get into that leftward bend early. Left bend? and then we can trade into right bend, which you'll see like every high level player there at Impact. Mm -hmm. Every one of them. From Neiman, Hogan, Hovland, they all look that way. All right, this is the, let's do this last Ooh. one of the rope. This one's kind of cool because it's um, still body driven, but we actually get a little bit into the wrist too. Yep. I, I want to point that out as you do this. Perfect. So what do this, we, what do we got a name for this one or? So this is um, David Weck developed this rope system, which I think is, is tremendous. So shout out to David Weck on, on developing this, but similar stuff where we're, we're activating, we're bouncing from spiral to spiral. Um, this one I like the most, I, I say it's a little bit more advanced because these, you can get a little bit more positional based. Mm -hmm. You can stretch it out, feel the stretch, but hold here for a minute and just train yourself on just general yeah. movement, right? Now this yeah. one, we're bouncing from one fascia line to the next. So slack and tension in one to the opposite, we're bouncing from one to the other. So I'm still doing the same, like when I'm doing this exercise, I'm going here. So Milo, you did a wonderful video on the swim move where in essence this or on the right, we're getting in the water and then pushing the water forward, right? If the water was just underneath here, boom, boom. And then I'm trading bang, bang. Now that's again, very chopped out, very mechanical driven. But same general movement here, but just doing it with flow, doing it with rhythm. So if I'm doing the same general movement, but I keep this rope in rhythm. So now I can feel bang, bang, bang. I can feel the little pulse of energy every time I shoot this rope at the camera. I'm turning, 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 bend, turn, bend, turn, bend, turn, bend, turn. So I'm going to turn you, let's turn a little bit of the other way, sorry, towards Milo. Okay. So I'm going to... One thing I want to point out that you pointed out to me, mm -hmm. keep going if you want, okay. was how your hips, to get it moving a little faster, your hips stay back. Yep. Now, well, the easy. other thing to point out too is that your wrists are relatively soft. They're supple, right? Yep, exactly. So you'll notice right now, I can fake this. So this is all arm line, all mm -hmm. wrist driven. So my, my engine, my chest isn't the primary driver. See the difference there? Mm -hmm. And you'll see like what's weird is this looks okay. This looks way better. Just the look of it. You're like, oh, that looks athletic. And the other one just doesn't. Yeah. Right? Just the same as if I did this again and I did it with the whole, see how the pelvis moves all over? This just doesn't look right. So now this like whole unit goes like teeter-totters. Like yeah. tipping versus using these little bins. Yeah. I kind of, I've done a video before where 
I basically was, I had a, a long stick, mm -hmm. and it was almost like I was canoe or yep. kayaking backwards, right? Yep. So if I was trying, if I just kayaked with my hands and wrists and arms, <laughs> I, I would not go very fast. Yeah. So I got to engage my core. I probably got to feel like my feet are firm up against the, um, the footrest in mm -hmm. that kayak, and I got to really use everything in my body to get me moving. And as you do that, keep doing that. You'll see, like right up here, if we had like a piece of duct tape from the top or the start of his T-spine all the way down to his sacrum, mm -hmm. you'd see that move. It's subtle. The spine is subtle. You'll see it bend in really, really cool ways. So by the way, that's incredibly healthy. Anybody that says that your spine shouldn't bend, it's unhealthy, it's nonsense. As long as it's not creeping down from here down, this is L-spine, mm -hmm. those seven vertebrae, that shouldn't take the brunt of the load. Like right there, you'll see it doesn't move hardly at all. Up here, it's super playful. Okay, able, the L-spine stays stabilized. That's why your core is nice and strong. It mm -hmm. stabilizes it, but the, the yep. ribs up, you've got this pliability. Yep. Well, it's it's kind designed of cool. to do that. It's designed to do that. What's well, kind yeah. of cool is if I, if I kept doing this and then sort of add in my turn here. Yeah, now you look good. And you'll start to play with it and feel like really cool dynamics that yeah. just, at the end of the day, anybody that's like halfway athletically inclined at all, it'll feel correct, it'll feel right, you'll feel the efficiency of it, and you'll be attracted to it. Rather than, what drives me nuts with this damn game, is a lot of the instruction is just pieced out nonsense that takes all the athleticism out of the player, and you end up getting worse because you went and saw a guy that's supposed to help you get better. Well, <laughs> that's why we talk a lot about flow and um, that's why we have a job. Yes. <laughs> no kidding. No kidding. Exactly. All right, guys. Well, hopefully that helped you get a few ideas, exercises you can do at home. Thanks to Riley here, and and you use this with some of your junior golfers to help them kind of yeah. feel some flow and and some older clients too. I mean, this would be great for you know somebody that a senior golfer that's looking to stop doing some of this stuff in their golf swing maybe create a little bit of that flowing motion be able to sling the club versus pulling or pushing or yep yeah some of the things we don't like to you bet there's lots of different ways to do it we use it with a lot of different players i mean obviously there's limitations sometimes with different fusions that we see sometimes with with our older some of our older clients however a lot of vertebrae in the spine and if we've got any playroom even in the c-spine you can yeah. still like engage some of those fascial lines and create efficiency. Well, it's always the fusions I see are in the uh, L spine. Exactly, <laughs> so it doesn't really bother you that yeah. much. So, but awesome. Hey guys, make sure you subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Um, follow uh, Riley here at Elite Golf Schools. Elite Golf Schools? Elite Golf Schools, yep. Uh, on Instagram, you guys can come get a lesson from him out here in Gilbert, Arizona. So, see you guys next time.